Today, I got a pre-birthday present. A marine tank monitor. Okay, well, a few easy steps to put this uh, holding tank monitor system in, and uh, I'm sure it's just going to be easy as pie, there's not going to be any problems, it's going to be wonderful, and uh, such a joyful experience, and uh, I'm sure none of those things are going to be true. Okay, so I've read the instructions, and... Uh, you know, step one is to find a good location for the panel itself, which is right here. And I'm not 100% sure where I'm going to put this thing. It's kind of big, but uh, it's not too big. My hope was I'd put it right in place of the existing tank monitor right there, but that's not going to happen. There's just not enough room between that and the inverter uh, panel right there. So I thought maybe up here, right next to the um, CO2 or uh, carbon monoxide alarm. And I'm going to take a look behind there, see if I can get behind there, see if I can run the cables back there. Okay, so I've uh, loosened up this panel and swung it open. And there is lots of room back here. So I think that's where that uh, panel's going to go. I'm going to cut a hole right over there and run it back here and run all the wires up to it from there uh i'm not sure where they're going to come up because the water tank's back down there um it's going to be interesting to get the cables up there the second step is to install the uh, foil strips that go on the outside of the plastic tank that the actual moda monitor sensors are going to connect to so the way they depict that in the drawings here is there's the outside of the tank, the two foil strips, and then the sensor between them. So I just need to measure my uh, water tank from top to bottom, which I think is going to be around 24 inches, and then cut uh, some foil tape, uh, two strips, to go uh, on the tank. Okay, so here's my water tank, and uh, you know, it's quite tall. I'm going to measure it right now. Um, I'm not sure where I'm going to put these sensor strips. I'm thinking back here because it's a little bit easier to get to. On the instructions it says you can only have um, per strip uh, they can only be between 15 and 40 square inches. So each strip is 2 inches wide. So that gives me a maximum length on each strip of 20 inches. And I think that tank is probably going to be more than um, 20 inches tall. And it turns out that uh, the tank is actually 20 inches tall. So that's great. So I'm going to cut the... It said to leave uh, maybe a half inch on each side so I'm going to be cutting uh, two strips at 19 inches and then trying to apply them but first I have to clean the area where I'm going to put the strips my uh, good buddy Ron that's on the docks here he's just stopped by and uh, turns out he has a YouTube channel as well and it's doing pretty good and uh, this is Ron here we have on your boat this, in Fender. my opinion, use of space. And it can be resolved with this. Ah. That goes in here. And ah. That's that. Bonus. And so, so fender holder instead thingy. Of, yeah, instead of tying and untying, and I'm coming in on this side and that side. Right. Uh, and then the people have to scramble it. So, since the fishing rod holders aren't being used for fishing at this moment, then 
then all you have to do is 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 uh, burn this in, and then you tie a knot. I don't know why yeah. I did that, but I did that. And then, <laughs> and then a washer, and you don't even need to tie a knot. You just heat it and mash it, and yeah. off you go. And each one of these can be labeled and put in the right spot on your boat for the right height. Bonus. And we're doing a making a big deal out of nothing. So Ron's uh, YouTube channel is what's it called? Oh, it's uh, Down Sail D O W N S A I L with a hyphen. Ah, okay. And, and it's Ron's fishing tips and tricks. Oh, bonus! All right. And, and there's a bunch of them, and they're all simple and plain and ordinary, and and not trying to be too technical because. You know, We're I fishermen, know. right? <laughs> okay, I've got my two uh, foil strips cut right here. And uh, we're going to place them down here on the tank. Cleaned off an area there. Should be good. Okay, the foil strips are on. And they go all the way down to the bottom there. Uh, time to install the sensor module and figure out a wiring path. Okay, so there's three wires coming off of the uh, sender unit that is over here at the tank, right down here. Um, and those three wires need to get up to where the panel's going to be. And so I've got them extended here very loosely. And I've brought them up here, and this wire here is running up through the firewall and to the panel area where I'm going to have the panel and I'm going to use it as a pull cord to pull these other three up in there so I'm going to tape them together and then pull them through so here's my pull wire and you can see it's pulled up the cables so should be just as simple as bringing these guys up a little bit further. Now I'll bring in all the slack here. And then I'll start to uh, loosely figure out uh, the terminations on these and then tie them all down with tie wraps. Um, Power is going to come off of this board right here. And so is the ground. There's some grounds down here and that should all work out pretty good so before I start fiddling around with the uh, electrical connections back here um, I always shut everything off that's AC um, DC the house batteries the starter batteries so there's the DC switch is off AC switch is off and down here these are my port and starboard starting switches and my house batteries, those are all off. So everything is dead. So if I make a mistake, I don't fry me or the boat. So I've got all the wires run and made all the connections. The uh, next step is to calibrate the tank. So I emptied it and did the empty calibration and now I need to do the full calibration so just to show you that I have the empty calibration done and if I press and hold the tank one button it shows E for empty now I'm going to change that to red but um, right for right now it's working so now I got to do the full calibration and that means I gotta put water in the tank, so you go do that. Well, I have to stop for today. Um, I don't have a proper saw to cut my hole here, but I did do the full tank calibration and the gauge uh, is showing full tank now. And it looks like it's going to work properly. I've just stuffed the wires back into the case here and closed everything up. And uh, I'll come back tomorrow. Well, I am not a big fan of drilling holes in my boat. 
But uh, here we go. We're starting to make the uh, panel cutout for our tank monitoring panel. I used a level to uh, level the lines for the cutout for the panel, but before I did that, I checked and made sure that the boat itself was level. Okay, it's uh, done. Not the prettiest hole I've ever cut, but it is uh, good. Tank monitor goes into it. Let's see here. Let me put that in like that. And it would go up a little bit like that. So it's going to work. Cool. Okay, well, now we have our panel in. It's all screwed in, it's not coming out. And if we want to know the level of our fresh water tank, we just press it and boom, there it is. Nice and full. And you'll notice it goes from red to green. When I wire the waste tank, uh, which will be tank number two, that'll go from green, empty, to red, full. Because we don't want a full black tank. Not a waste tank, a black tank. Black water. Not good. Alright, well that concludes this video um, for installing an external uh, tank monitor. Hope you enjoyed it. The folks at Snake River were very, very uh, helpful and they sent this thing right away. Even gave me priority shipping when I didn't ask for it. So that was nice. And I'm looking forward to wiring up tank number two sometime in the future. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe and give me a thumbs up. Time to clean up the mess.